Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Friday, the 15th of June, 2012, and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net speaking. Let's take a look at the closing numbers here for the week. Um, we were up a little bit for the uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell lost a little bit of ground. It was really a choppy week, and uh, it didn't. Uh, it, it was by no means uh, easy here, as we saw quite a bit of volatility uh, for the market. And you know, it was kind of red, green, red, green for a while there, but uh, we did finish with two positive days here Thursday and Friday so the market is you know just below or right at this prior important level of support um, where we've seen a little bit of resistance as well just uh, on a gap earlier this week when we take a look at the 30 minute time frame you can see this is kind of the band of resistance where we are right now basically from 133.80 uh, to about 134 and a quarter so I don't think we're quite you know you can't really say that we've broken the neckline of this inverted head and shoulders pattern. We, we talked about this inverted head and shoulders pattern uh, actually last Friday before it even became apparent. We were talking about the potential for that setup if it was to pull back down towards the rising five-day moving average. We've seen that so far, but it's not compelling that uh, we are uh, going to turn right around from here just because we have this inverted head and shoulders pattern. When we look at the daily time frame, again, we've got this big level of congestion, and it's possible we're going to continue to make a run uh, up towards maybe that uh, declining 50 50-day moving average. The declining 50-day moving average makes me a little suspicious still that it just seems a little bit too nice and neat that we have this inverted head and shoulders pattern. Of course, to, to come up with a... Uh, um, a measured move objective of this pattern. We take a look at the height, which we'll just call uh, 127 and a half. We'll be pretty conservative there and go up to and call it 134. So basically, we're looking at six and a half points. And we're going to add that to uh, 134. So that would give us basically a price objective of 140 and a half. I think that's really too aggressive to uh, to really consider right here. Um, you know, again, because we have that declining 50-day moving average, we've got the potential maybe that there's going to be a, a trend line in the way or meet that trend line. But it's, you know, it, it was fairly encouraging uh, action at the end of the week. We did hold above this bigger level where we've seen all the volume uh, trade hands here in the last month and a half or so. So that 132 did, did provide some solid uh, support. And now when you look at the level of volume, that is the, the, the uh, amount of volume on this uh, chart here that we've traded below the where the market is right now that is encouraging because it should be able to provide some kind of support here I don't think it's going to be easy going we were talking about this market being basically within this trading range of 131 and a quarter uh, up to about 133 and a half so it's good to see we've broken uh, uh, beyond that next week I would think that uh, probably Thursday afternoon's low is going to be an important level to monitor about 132 and a half if we can make maintain above that then intermediate term it looks like we're still doing some constructive work but within the context of this declining 50-day moving average still makes it very uh, unclear here so very muddy waters it's, it's difficult to say uh, that you want to really lean into any positions uh, on the long side and it's clearly not a, a good place to be shorting with this declining uh, I'm sorry with the advancing five-day moving average um, the Nasdaq uh, closed right at 63 and we've seen the similar uh, range in here is basically 63 to about 63 dollars and 40 cents this has been the little band of resistance um, we have that same inverted head and shoulders pattern in here and we could conservatively call that 60 to 63 uh, giving us an upward objective near about 66 dollars a share and again I think that's too aggressive for this market it might end up uh, where the market uh, does go but you can't really take these patterns and uh, price objectives too seriously um, they give us an indication of what's potential and what of the, what the potential of the market is and uh, and that sort of thing. But we've got a lot of levels we still have to deal with. Um, you know, if we can get beyond the 50-day moving average at about 64 and a dime, well, we've got this level in here at about 64.75 that has the potential to act as resistance as well. So. Uh, again, we've just got to, you know, continue to uh, trade it stock by stock and look at this market uh, objectively and say, you know, 61.50 was the important level this week, right? 61.60. Um, we did see some higher lows. 
lows, and now uh, I think that 6150, 6160 will continue to be the important level next week that we want to see this market hold above. We've got decent volume down at that 6250 level, so uh, maybe that's an important area of support as well. The the Russell 2000 is still within this overall, you know, tracing out the right shoulder basically with the bigger uh, resistance uh, in the in the the neckline basically up at about seventy eight dollars. So this seventy eight area is really you know, and if we're to get there on Monday, look at all the ex energy we've just expended getting to that level. I don't think it would ma make a nice clean break beyond it. And if we were to, well, you know, look at we've got you know this makes it much more unlikely I think the fact that it was such a strong level of support uh, and we had the lower highs coming into it and more repeated tests of support now that support should offer resistance and look we've got the 50-day moving average basically right on that level now one scenario I might believe would be that we would get above there for a day maybe even two days and get a lot of people excited but with a declining 50-day moving average these rallies generally should not be trusted so I think a lot of people will say hey we're back above the 50 day moving average similar to the way they uh, you know the people said hey we're below the 200 day moving average two weeks ago it's more the direction of these moving averages that we want to take a look at so we're getting this this very different picture we've got a, an advancing 200 day moving average now we've got a de declining 50 day moving average if we're to you know get above that for the 50 day moving average for a couple days then I think we're going to reject it back down um, we're talking about the Nasdaq so let's go back to that we're, we would likely get rejected we were actually talking about the Russell weren't we we would likely get rejected back down through it and then scare a lot of people so just a lot of uh, extremes on, on each end and uh, that's where we could be setting up for so don't allow yourself to be complacent because the market you know if, if let's say the market did get above that 78 level and it was above the 50 day moving average there will be a lot of talk about it but what is more important is the direction of the primary moving average on the time frame you're looking at and the primary moving average on this daily time frame is the 50 day moving average whereas the primary moving average on an inter immediate term would be the five-day moving average and you can see we you know broke a little bit of resistance here today at about that 76 and a half level so we'd like to see probably the five-day moving average hold next week um, and in this 76 and a half area you know 76 and a quarter area we've seen some pretty good volume in there so we'd like to see that hold as well um, but you, you can't get a you know the market's still got a lot of fundamental news it's going to work through with uh, um, Greece this weekend people have asked me well what do I think is going to happen and I you know I'm not in the we're not meant to be in the prediction business we're in the risk management business and when we're in the risk management business we have to look at the you know things like global economic conditions and say there's a lot of uncertainty out there and uh, you know why is my opinion gonna matter uh, so much what I'd rather be aware of what are the key levels that the market is gonna focus on and I want to know where the turning points might end up being so that I can start looking at shorter term time frames and then be able to maybe get involved with some some momentum that unwinds in either direction and more importantly to be able to, to do so not after chasing a market but after letting it consolidate a little bit and, and put my stop in a place that uh, uh, appears to be low risk that is you know not you know after something's digested a little bit of gains or losses um, but I think that you know again we can't really have uh, a real bias going into next Monday um, again global economic conditions who knows what's gonna happen my opinion doesn't matter right you know you shouldn't even be asking me um, is what I have now answered for the people who ask me that what do I think is gonna happen I don't know but if the semiconductors get above and hold above 32 bucks a share well that's gonna complete this little inverted head and shoulders pattern the height of this pattern is uh, two and a half points so if we add two and a half points to the breakout it would give us a price objective of 34 and a half once again that is really an aggressive price target I think I, I couldn't see that happening what I think would be reasonable is maybe up near about 32 seven to $33 a share we had uh, important support there before that which did turn into resistance and we have the declining 50-day moving average so the semiconductors are right at the top end of that range um, and you can see it's been a range bound market in here of uh, $30, $30.80 up to uh, $31.90 so um, this this group looks uh, poised to, to possibly move up towards that 33 level again with a declining 50-day moving average 
coverage. This isn't meant for investors, uh, I don't think, to, to get involved. Um, but it does look like it's uh, got that potential to maybe get moving a little bit here uh, to the upside. But it's going to need to get above and hold above for at least a half hour that 32 level. If it gets above 32 and comes back into, let's say, 31.75, I would think that that would qualify most likely as a failed breakout. And from failed moves, we know a lot of fast moves occur. So be careful, be on the alert. Don't just think, well, breaking above 32, it looks like it's going to 33. The most important part of any plan is managing risk. And you have to say, is there a, an amount of potential um, reward available Available based on what I consider to be the, uh, the the risk. So, you know, and you have to base it on true objective observation of the charts, not just on, well, I'm going to buy it and risk 5%. 5% means absolutely nothing. What's more important is, you know, if it holds above that five-day moving average, then I'll hold it. If it holds above at least 3,175-ish, where do you want to give uh, give it? Not just a... a, a, a um, uh, a random percentage uh, number. Uh, the financials right up at the top end of their range. In fact, you might even say that they broke. We've been talking about fourteen dollars and twenty-five cents. So uh, when we take a look at it, we are you know into this band that has been uh, resistant. So we had some resistance here, and then the top end of it here. So we're into that area, and it, it doesn't mean just get long and stay long. Um, you know, if you are long, you have to look at it and say, what's my risk? And I think back below uh, today's low, Friday or Thursday afternoon's low, and that five-day moving average, they all kind of come together in about 14 and a dime. Back below 14 and a dime, I, I would get very defensive and think that, you know, perhaps this is a failed breakout, which could lead to continuation of the uh, the decline that, that we see based on that 50-day moving average. Um, if we're were to continue though this does look like well we've got the 50-day moving average at about 1465 and then we have 1480 which was prior uh, resistance which then turned into support as well so we're you know we're kind of seeing some semi bullish looking signs in the semiconductors and in the financials but they're just very difficult to to um, uh, to trust here so uh, keep that in mind and um, Anyways, that will do it. Well, you know what? I, I said I was going to take a look at Facebook. Facebook, we've been talking about this week as well. Um, a lot of people have been saying, you know, here's this bearish flag that's been setting up. And that definitely looked to be possible. What we were talking about, though, more importantly, was the, the fact that the Facebook had gotten it back above that or above the five-day moving average on a closing basis. It, the five-day moving average had flattened out and held its support that whole time. And then it broke some important resistance uh, just yesterday afternoon and we had a nice continuation up from there so uh, Facebook you know it had a great day today obviously I definitely wouldn't be chasing it at this point um, but you know it's going to be continue to be a volatile stock that will give uh, a lot of trading opportunities I think that you know perhaps we get up towards 31 uh, where we had this prior support that seems to be uh, maybe reasonable if we take a look at a volume by price chart and just kind of get rid of that stuff way up there you can see that 32 we had some uh, some bigger volume change hands in there so perhaps we continue up towards that level but I would wait for you know if you're looking for a fresh purchase I would think that especially because it got so extended late in the day um, that maybe it pulls back towards 2940 2950 on Monday and then as it begins to rally back up perhaps through 2970 ish um, and obviously we can't um, you know, we can't tell from here. But if, it, if it's to pull back and then get some, some further upward momentum, then perhaps we would want to get involved with a stop down near about uh, $29.15 or so. Apple was the other one I wanted to talk about because Apple's uh, America's favorite stock, basically. And, and Apple's just, you know, since they reported the earnings, um, let's take a look at the volume weighted average price since the earnings, actually, because I haven't done that in a while. But we're still, I believe, below it. We're, we're right around that level so um, this is the average price since Apple reported that last earnings report so the buyers are coming back and regaining control we do have these higher lows um, and it's getting more neutral here we do still have a declining 50-day moving average so I think we probably have a couple more weeks of maybe this choppy sideways action then if we can get it to set up where that 50-day moving average is flattened out and we've got a 10 above the 20 and the 20 above the 50 and then we take out about this 590 ish level 
level, then we could see another run even for the highs in, in uh, a stock like Apple. Uh, happy Father's Day to all, the, all of those uh, out there who are fortunate enough to have kids, and um, I'll talk to you next week. Thanks.